Major Roy Klein is a name that held no meaning to us. He was a complete stranger about whom we had never heard and whom we had never met. Yet an image of the last seconds of his life won't leave our mind. Roy was a son. He was a brother. He was a husband to Sarah and a father to three-year-old Gilad and one-year-old Yoav. But most of all, Roy was a hero for all of us. He was a face and a name to the many Jewish heroes spanning the generations. Roy's funeral was Thursday, July 27, 2006, the day that would have been his 31st birthday. Major Roy Klein was a Golani Brigade Deputy Commander. He was killed in the ambush amongst the houses of Bin Jabal, a large village out in southern Lebanon. His Bola terrorists killed eight soldiers, including Roy, and injured nearly two dozen. There were other soldiers next to Roy. A hand grenade was thrown at them, and Roy shouted, Grenade! He then threw his body over it, sacrificing his life for the sake of his soldiers, who later attributed being alive to his act of selflessness. In his last seconds of life, Roy mustered the strength to shout, Shema Yisrael! The prayer that Jews have prayed for centuries, declaring our belief in God and in a better world. The prayer that so many Jewish martyrs throughout the generations called out, as they were being led to their deaths. It was for his loved ones that Roy served in the special units of the paratroop and Golani brigades. It was for them that the ideals represented by the Shema Yisrael prayer that Roy diligently and courageously pursued his army service, advancing to the point where he would have been promoted to battalion commander. What a colossal contrast to, between Roy and his enemy. Roy was there to ensure a peaceful existence of his people in their homeland. He was there to safeguard the innocent lives of his children and his nation, to ensure that people could live in their homes in peace and tranquility, to guarantee that they could continue their ordinary day-to-day -day activities, activities like shopping in the mall without being blown to bits, like eating a family meal together in a pizza shop without worrying about flying shrapnel, or like praying in a synagogue without having to run for cover in a bomb shelter or some, or like sending their children in a school bus without thoughts of bullets penetrating within. Roy was there to defend his people against those who vowed the destruction. Even in his death, he sacrificed his own life to ensure that his comrades could live. Roy's enemy was willing to die to bring death and mourning to as many as possible. Roy was willing to die to ensure life and liberty for others to preserve a world in which Jews could pray to God in their synagogues, perform God's commandments, and make the world a better, more moral, and more conscientious place. This is the, time, the third time in the last century that the Jewish people have found themselves on the front lines against those who sought their annihilation. For the Nazis, a Jew was a racial impurity to be exterminated like insects. For the Soviet communists, the Jewish religion was a thorn on their sides to be eradicated, and for the Islamic extremists, the Jew and his state must be eliminated from the face of the earth. Less than a century has passed since the Jews fell in the Soviet gulag with a chant of Shema in their mouths for the mere crime of observing Kashrut or Shabbat in their per private lives. Over 65 years have passed since the echo of the Shema resonated in the Nazi gas chambers where Jews were suffocated and then burnt to ashes in the crematoriums just because they were born as Jews. And now Roy Klein follows the path of these martyrs, dying with a cry of Shema on his lips in the act of defending his people from those who yet again wish to destroy them.